Connie Hovell. I teach floral design at Merritt College. And today I'm going to show you how to make a guest table centerpiece arrangement. The tools I'll be using today are a basic pair of clippers that sometimes is necessary for hardier stems and a floral knife. Most of the cutting is done with a floral knife, which is a basic tool of all floral designers. The first thing I'd like to do is line this with a couple of aspidistra leaves. Now these are a beautiful leaf, very popular during the, during the um, Victorian era. It's also known as cast iron plant. And I'm going to be submerging these in the water of the container so that it's really important to wipe them off carefully first eliminating any dust and debris that could go into the water. Now they have a very strong mid rib, which I like to shave the bottom portion because that makes the leaf bend a little easier inside the container. I'll remove the main stem while I'm at it. I put the leaves inside the container because they hide the dirty water and the messy look of the stems. It gives the design a nice clean look, quite contemporary and interesting. Next, we'll use clear cellophane tape. This is a tape that is designed for the floral industry. And I'll be using this to make a tape grid across the top of the container. Many people have a difficult time working in water because the stems just like to move around and choose their own position. Having the tape grid across the top like this helps the stems to stay in place and not move around quite as much. There are other techniques that I'll be showing along the way that also help your materials to stay put where you place them. Now, if you notice, I've gone across the top with four pieces of tape. I've placed the tape two strips in each direction. This will help give me smaller sections that I can use to place the stems in. I've also taped around the very top edge of the container because that helps to hold the tape onto the container. If you're not careful, if you haven't cleaned your container properly, the tape loves to jump right off of there. <laughs> so, Next, we'll fill your container with water. Most flowers like lots of water, so I tend to fill the containers pretty high. What I'd like to do now is lay a base work with my hydrangea and some foliage. The leaves that I'll be using are Dusty Miller, right here. This is a lovely, silvery, fuzzy leaved foliage. When you lay a nice network of foliages or low materials, it really helps to um, create a network that will hold your special blossoms in place. So hydrangea works wonderfully. If you can see, it's a nice dense cover. I will be able to insert stems right through here. For the other portion, I will use some of this Dusty Miller. And I'm cutting my stems with a knife. I'm also making sure that I do not place any leaves inside the water. When you have leaves down inside the water, they decay rapidly and that causes bacteria to grow in the water. Your flower stems will drink the bacteria which lodges itself in the xylem or in the drinking cells of the stems of your flowers and then clogs them so that your flowers don't drink well. So it's very important to keep your water clean and clear as much as possible. Now inside the container, the stems are crisscrossing to make a hidden grid inside. That hidden grid that is caused by the stems 
will also help to hold your other flowers in place. So we'll end up with a grid at the top edge of the container and a hidden grid inside of the container caused by the stems. Both of these grids together work to hold your design so that the flowers don't flip-flop and change directions and frustrate you. Next I'll work with some of these lovely chrysanthemums. And again, we want to remove foliage from the stems. We don't want any leaves inside the water. And again, I'm placing the stems at an angle so that I can promote a nice grid system inside. Why do you scrape the stem? Because there are so many bumps on the stem from leaves that have come off. Mm -hmm. um, those bumpy places are bacteria breeding sites. So I'm trying to put in a nice, clean, smooth stem that will hopefully not breed bacteria inside the water. Bacteria is the florist's worst enemy because it, it does clog the drinking cells of the flowers and then your flowers don't last very long. Now I have some incredibly gorgeous oriental lilies and lilies, my, many of you know, have pollen on the anthers here. It looks very beautiful. For a professional job, however, it's very important to remove the anthers and the pistol. These are the anthers. This is the pistil. These are actually reproductive parts of the flower. And when you remove the anthers with the pollen, it cleans the flower up so you don't have pollen dust raining down on the tablecloth. And at this point, I'm checking the design from all directions to make sure that it looks balanced and even. I'm using three lilies because it's a much easier number for the eye to look at. Twos and fours oftentimes end up looking awkward and unbalanced. Three provides a lovely rhythm and flow. I was thinking about using this lily grass in the design, but as I get the design to this stage, I feel it's a little bit too much and would look too busy. I love the soft gardeny look of this design, so I think we'll leave it right there and not use the grass. I hope you've learned something with this. I have a lot more to share. Please come join the classes. We have a wonderful time learning and exploring floral design.